Hello, Maze. Once again, Maze and Blue fans. Now, I wanted to do a video just about something that was on my mind. So, as always, like, share, subscribe, and I'm just going to get into it. So, I wanted to do a video today about Michigan and its playmakers and the difference between having dudes that hold that hold each other accountable and not having dudes like that and and seizing the moment i had a somebody left a comment on one of my older videos about what a difference a year makes and i had to go back and watch the video it was actually um it was a it was the my OSU video from last year after the loss and everything and I had to say he was right because I mean what a what a year of difference makes and a lot of the points I was making in that video is coming for to fruition this year. And you're seeing it with dudes like Chase Winovich. It's it's one thing to have good players and I've said this a lot in videos that you can have the greatest coach and good players, but you need leaders on the field. Guys that hold dudes accountable and and seize the moment. And that's what you're seeing out of this team right now. And I, honestly, I'm just so proud to see how Chase Winovich is taking, is taking the reins of this team and making it, holding it accountable. And just some something as simple as saying the revenge tour and not just saying it, but he, he means it. And he's, and he's getting it stuck in, in the rest of these dudes' heads that this is serious. And and we we might think, we, we look back at 2016 and we're all like, that's the season that could have been. We could have made the playoff. All we had to do was beat OSU in that game. We had it and everything like that. But there's dudes that were on that team, like Chase, Rashawn was on there, uh, Devin Bush wasn't playing, I don't think yet, but he was he was on the team. Quiddy Pay, a lot of these dudes were on that team, and they, they know how it feels to be to be on the edge of maybe having a great season and then having it ripped from you, and then coming back the next year and having a young team that didn't know how to win yet. So a lot of these dudes are they're hungry, they're hungry to get back to that point, and you're seeing it. Chases, chases. This is his last year, so he knows this is my last year to make it to make to to leave a stamp on Michigan. So I'm just loving the way, like, like just like uh, there's a video that was going before the game of Chase and uh, Devin Bush telling the crowd to to amp it up, amp it up. Let's 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 make this the big, the best home field advantage that it should be. With we got the biggest stadium, why isn't it the loudest stadium? So. Things like that, the little things that try to try to change the culture of Michigan and get it back to being a winning top program. It's little stuff like that, but you you have to have somebody that takes it personal. This that's just not out there to oh dude, we're a top team and no no we're a top team now let's show everybody why we're a top team. I don't want them to score. I'm taking it personal. They beat us last year. I'm taking I'm not I'm not just all we it's Michigan State, it's Wisconsin, we gotta beat them and all this. No, let's take it personal. I hate Wisconsin. I hate Penn State. They blew us out. I'm finna spank them this year. That's what it's about. When you want to change the culture from being losing every year and being eight and five and stuff like that, that's the type of stuff you need. That's the type of dudes you need on your team to, to hold it accountable and make it known. No, nah, we're not losing. Let's go. Let's go show them why we're better than them. And it's happening. And it's it's me as a fan and 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 knowing what it takes to to be a winner in 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 on the football field, it takes that. Like you can you 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 can have a team of choir boys and that's the greatest team ever. They're, they're such great young men. And then they get out on their field and get their butt whooped because they, they, that's what they is. They choir boys. Just be honest. You need you need dudes with grit and attitude on that field 
to to compete at a high level. You need those dudes. Cause some people might not like it, but that's just a fact. You need you need dudes with attitude. Like you got you have to have those some of those dudes. You don't have to have a whole team of them, but you need those. You need at least three or four of them out there. That's 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 on both sides of the ball, especially on defense. But we're 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 just seeing it. Like these dudes are hungry from. From that 2016 season, it might have been a failed season in everyone's eyes in the long run, but that's that season is sticking in the craw of these dudes. And then last year just made it even worse. So now they're just, they're just out to prove something. Now they're just hungry, hungry. It's just like if you don't feed your dog for for a long time, when he sees something that he can eat, he don't care what it is. He go, he ready to eat, and, and, and that's what what these boys are doing right now. They don't care who it is; they just ready to eat. They don't care who it. Penn State, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm hungry. I'm finna eat them. I don't care who it is. But Chase, Devin, this team is just loaded, especially on defense. I'm loving. I'm I'm just loving the way they coming out, and they don't want people to score, and they're just dominating on the defensive end. Like you know, it don't, it's to the point. Michigan State, we ain't score number twenty one. Anybody that watched that 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 Michigan State game, because that that was a low scoring game. We all we had was twenty one. But if you watch that game, when we got up fourteen, it felt like thirty, didn't it? Like you, there was no hope of them scoring. Like. The way we're doing teams, this is a real control ass whooping. That's what I like to call it. When you beat a team, just slowly, slowly beating them, and and they don't even the game. You're only up ten, but it might as well be a hundred. That's what we're doing to teams, and it's just beautiful to watch. Now the job's not done. I'm not saying the season's over because we still we still got to play Rutgers, Rutgers, Indiana, and and OSU, of course, but. I'm just I'm liking what I'm seeing. Like this is a team that I can you can put your faith in, really, and that's what I'm I'm loving about it because they're taking everything personal. And when you take it personal, it's hard to have a let up. Like our let up was pretty much that Northwestern game, and we got out of there. You're always gonna have a close game sometimes that you you just gonna have to make some big plays to win it. You know, you might come out lackadaisical. They just come out and hit you in the mouth. They hit us in the mouth. Got a mouth. Got up fourteen nothing. But these this this team and the way they're playing, like they're taking it personal. When you're taking it personal, it puts you on point and it puts you it puts takes your game up to another notch because you're not you 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 when whether it's practice film, lifting weights, any of that you're. You're taking attention to detail. Your attention to detail is heightened because you don't want to lose that bad. And I always tell people this: Oh, is it better to be a winner or or hate to lose? It's hate to lose. That's what it is. Because you can you can be a winner, you can be just a winner, but that dude that hates to lose, he's always gonna beat you because he hates to lose. He doesn't want to feel that feeling of of defeat. So he's going to do whatever he has to do to to win because he don't want to feel that feeling of lo- of losing. And that's what we're seeing right now because this team felt what it felt like to be a crappy team last year. And mostly and let's be honest, it's mostly because of the offense. The offense was just garbage last year. I mean, O'Corn it was what it was between O'Corn and the offensive line, and while I'm t- bringing up the offensive line, that's that's part of it. If we put Shea behind that offensive line last year, we probably have about the same season, maybe a little better. Won a couple more games, might have been ten and three or something like that. But Shea is taking this, Shea is taking this offense, and this well, the offensive line is taking a big step. Before I can even speak about Shea. The offensive line, Higdon has, what, six games straight of 100 yards rushing? That's offensive line. I mean, Shea, Shea can keep, knowing Shea can actually throw the ball accurate downfield will keep those safeties back a little bit more. But a lot of the times, Higdon's still running with seven, eight guys in the box. 
He's, it's just the offensive line is just playing better and creating holes for him. And then once you mix in Shea with the the option to run, then you you get what you're getting. He's, he's got six. Is it six or is it seven? I think it's seven games, 100 yards, 100 yards or more. So that's what you're seeing. But Ed Warner and this offensive line coach, the offensive line coach, Ed Warner, this dude has done his job, and hopefully we need to make sure he stays and don't try to go anywhere else or anything like that. Or because he has done, he has worked magic with this offensive line. And then when Shea, when we need a big play in the passing game, like Shea isn't asked, he's not asked to do much. And I don't. That's not. That's that's just by design because Harbaugh wants to run the ball, but when he when we need him to make a throw. He's done it. The only game he didn't is is the OA, I mean the Notre Dame game, and it was the first game of the year, and he hasn't been in the system, so I'll give him a pass for that game, making fumbling in or whatever through through a pick. Like I'll give him a pass for that game, but every other game, if when we've needed him to make a throw, if it was actually close, he's made it between the Northwestern game and the the Michigan State game. Every other game was really a blowout, so. But those two games, for, for sure, he's made those clutch throws, that, that clutch play that we needed to get over the top. So everybody, we're wondering about Shea and all that this season. This is why I made videos in the summer saying we got our quarterback. That's the reason why. Because you just like you're on YouTube now, you can go watch his film from last year and it's, the film don't lie. The dude can make those throws. He can, he, his arm talent is good enough to make those throws. So it's an upgrade. Now I hate I hate that Dylan McCaffrey got hurt because you never know what will hap what can happen. But hopefully hopefully um, hopefully uh, Milton Joe Milton is is ready to go because I, honestly I don't know what Peters has and I don't, I'm not sure like. I'm not sure if he can run this offense or whatever cuz sometimes when you get killed behind behind the offensive line a quarterback is done like it it'll ruin them and Peters got hurt and when he came in that South Carolina game he looked like garbage I'm just be honest and when he got in against Wisconsin he threw a pick so I'm not sure that offensive line might have just ruined all his confidence from last from from last year it might have just ruined all of Brandon Peters' confidence. But the the rankings came out today. Michigan is four, and they're saying if we take care of business, we should be in. But, of course, you know, the SEC bias, it is what it is. They're trying to say that – they're trying to say that if Georgia was to somehow beat Bama, we might – Bama might get in we might get knocked out. Now – Honestly, I've always said this. Notre Dame beat us. But if we went out, I'm I'm pretty sure Notre Dame has one less game on their schedule than we do. So honestly, if we play in one more game, that that counts as we should jump them if we're undefeated because their schedule besides us, their schedule is really garbage. Like all the good teams that you plan on them playing Stanford, USC, uh, Stanford, USC, Virginia Tech, Florida State, all of those teams are having like horrible years. So technically their schedule is pretty garbage if you just really look at it. Like most of those teams that you expect to be top 25 teams, they haven't be, been. So if, if, if Georgia was to somehow beat them to beat the, uh, to beat Bama and we go undefeated, the rest of the way, like I feel like we should really jump Notre Dame. And that's just why, because their schedule is pretty garbage. But that's just, that's we still a ways away from that. So it's something in the back of my mind and everybody else's mind. But we still got to take care of business against OSU, as always. We we have to we have to handle that for bragging rights and just to stop hearing all this about OSU, we can never beat them and all that. I'm so tired of hearing about that from OSU fans. They'll come on my videos, comment you. 
They'll be on Facebook pages, Michigan, other Michigan videos on YouTube. Like, I, I've never seen a fan base that comes and loves to come to watch other teams, their rivals' videos. I don't watch OSU videos. I don't know what what's up with OSU fans, why they do that. But they're known for it for some reason. I don't want to watch OSU. St Only time I'm going to watch their stuff is if I'm trying to make a video to give an, an, an analysis of their offense and stuff. So I do some research. But I'm not going to sit and watch videos about them, about somebody just talking about their team. I don't know what's up with them in that. But... You know, we got a long way to go. We got a ways to go still. So, I just wanted to do a video and just talk about how how pr really proud I am of these boys taking taking reins of this team and making it their own. Like, have some swag, dancing on the sidelines, talk stuff. This is football. That choir boy stuff, I can keep that. Because... Them dudes with attitude, that's that's who win you championships. You got to have some of those some of those dudes that are hungry and with, with attitudes and swag. Those are the dudes that's gonna win you a championship. Not these dudes that are just quiet, all oh, he don't say nothing and all. Yeah, he ain't gonna say nothing, but we're gonna be losing on Saturday. Give me dudes like Chase Winovich and Devin Bush hungry and mad and then out there go out there, talk stuff before the game and back it up on the field. Give me dudes like that all day. But uh, that's all I got for today. I just wanted to talk about these dudes and our leaders. Like these are actual leaders of the team. From from Metellus making a step up, from becoming a, a liability on defense to a strength on defense. That's a big difference. Canel also. Chase Winovich taking another step up. Rashawn hasn't been there. He picked up the slack. Devin Bush taking it personal. All these dudes, David Long, Quiddy Pay, Uche, Brandon Watson. When he when you throw a ball in his area, you, you better be careful because he will pick it and try to take it to the house. He's balling. Fifth year senior. Handle your business. I'm loving it. And Shea with the offense. One last thing before I go. I'm, I'm looking to see us. <coughs> I'm looking to see us acclimate um, Tariq Black a little bit more in the offense. He got that touchdown call back. And I was sad to see it because, you know, he's put in a lot of work to get back and, you know, be a part of the team. Because he is our number one receiver, especially once he gets back acclimated and is getting more reps. Dude is a beast. As far as the total package, he's that with our receivers. As far as speed, route running, and just being a beast. Like, cause the dude is huge. So he he's the he's the total package. So I'm just looking for our offense to take another step because DPJ, Tariq, and Nico. That's something serious. You put DPJ in the slot and you got those two huge dudes on the outside. That's that's scary. That's that's scary. Three big receivers like that that can all run. So I just want to see the offense start. You getting that passing game a little more consistent. That's if we because we will need it. Some I say if we need it, we will need it at some time. Especially if we make the playoff, we're gonna need. We're going to need that passing game to show up because I I don't – when we get to those games, um, to that game, Shea hasn't had to, had to carry the offense. The one time he did was, was Notre Dame and we lost. He couldn't do it. So I'd like to see him have a game. I mean, I wouldn't like to see it, but during the playoff, it's going to be needed. So I'd like to see him have a game where he, he just really just shreds a defense – and, and Higdon's not getting 100 yards. Like, he has to carry the team. Because those playoff teams, it's not guaranteed that if if we make it, that we can run on them. So I'd like to see Shea get a game where he carries the offense. But, you know, if we don't need it, hey, I, I ain't, I ain't going to complain. I mean, but 
if we get to the playoff, we definitely will. Shea, Shea will probably have to carry carry us in one of those games. Definitely. But we'll, we'll get to that when we get to it. So like, share, subscribe. If you feel like dropping a donation, feel free. As always, go blue.